never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop 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 working. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, man. That's how we start. Thank you, Father, for, for these families here, my Lord, for this worship team, my King. We thank you for all you do in this place, Father. We still get to worship you, my Lord, in this time of, of this pandemic, whatever it is, Father. Nothing holds us back from worshiping you, my King. Father, keep blessing us, my Lord. Father, let it be your spirit right now in this place that moves everyone, my King. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In your precious, wonderful name we pray. And everybody says, my God. Amen. Woo. Man. What's going on, peoples? How's everybody doing? Don't think I switched up and became a, a Bengals fan. That did not happen. All right. I know Billy's over. Thank you, man. man. I, I know Billy's over there all, all happy. What I do? Oh, you like this? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thanks, see? Billy, no. No. It didn't happen. What happened was I got these fly shoes, right? And uh, today, you know, we, we, we're, we're getting the website ready for, for House of Grace, and we needed to get some content. So I was like, I didn't have, I had an orange shirt to go with the orange shoes. So I, I ain't got the C or the little Bengal stripes or nothing like that. I'm still a Raiders fan. Oh, man, you guys, there's a lot of hate going on here at House of Grace. So anyway, guys, today's message, man, I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited because I've been trying to figure this out for a long time, you know. There's a lot of times that we as people, we think we do a lot for God. You know, we think we're following God's footsteps and, and we're listening and, 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 and we're doing what he wants us to do to spread the gospel and everything. A lot of times... We think that some more other people are being blessed and we got problems and we got this and we got issues and why, 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 why? Why do I worship you, Lord? Why do I serve you, Lord? And still, you don't take this away from me. This that holds me back so much. So today's message is called Thorns. And we're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start out from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. So if you have a Bible, if you brought your iPad, if you can see the screen over here, we're going to read together. And it says, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations... A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. How many times? And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure 
in my infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am. Thank you, Lord, for your word, Father. Let it be all you and none of me right now, my king. So it says, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh. You're like, that's not nice, God. Thorns hurt. Anybody garden here like me? Anybody got a garden here like me? I know you do, Allison. You got like, she brought me a cucumber the other day that was big as me. If you are, you, you know, you've been gardening and you've had roses and, and uh, anybody have a holly tree at their house? Oh, my God. Is that a pain or what? When the, hot, when the, when the, when the leaves dry up, man, and you try to pick them up, oh, it's you're like freaking, and, and it hurts so bad. And the leaves are everywhere, and then you got to pick them up kind of, you know, by the side so, you know, you, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't get, you know, it, it don't hurt. Thorns, they hurt. So the Apostle Paul is talking about, I have been given all this revelation. I have been blessed to have seen something that I can't explain through words. Right before this, he talks about that time that he didn't know if he was awake or he was asleep. Or he was dreaming or not, but he didn't want to boast too much. He said, somebody, he didn't even mention his name. Somebody went to heaven, and I heard things I can't even explain. He's talking about all these blessings that God has given him, all these revelations that he has. And then, right after all these blessings and revelations have been getting, and he says, and God gave me a thorn. And I was given a thorn. What does that mean, G? That means that as a Christian, there's going to be some good times, and oftentimes you got to deal with pain. So what is a thorn? The definition of a thorn here, okay, Paul used the word scallops, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word for thorn. And it means duress or irritation, something that frustrates or causes trouble in the lives of those afflicted. Scollops, pain, trouble. Anybody like pain and trouble? In the book of James, it talks about, count it all blessings, brother, when you're going through it. Who's down with that? Nobody, right? Wait a minute. Gee, you told me that if I came to the Lord, God was going to be good and he was going to listen to my prayers and everything was going to be, and I was going to live happily ever after. I didn't tell you that. Whoever's preaching you that gospel is lying. There's going to be sufferings. There's going to be tough times. A lot of times God does his thorns on people for a purpose. But we don't like it. See, in here, there's speculation and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Greek scholars and I've been reading down up and down on Google what people thought that Paul's thorn was. Oh, man, there's speculation that it was his eyesight. You go back to Galatians, he talks about his eyes. And then there was speculation about that. It might be, you know, uh, it, it was because he was being bullied by all those people that were called these super apostles. And he didn't know, you know, how to react to them. He was trying to tell them, man, you know, Satan sent these guys to get me, to buffet me. They don't know if it was anxiety. They don't know if it was depression. You actually don't know. There's a lot of speculation on there right now, but there's a reason why he didn't exactly tell you what it is, just to let you know that a lot of us have thorns. So the next time you look at somebody 
And you think that they got it going on because they got the right house and then they drive the nice car and their family pictures look great on Facebook. Know that those people you think so highly of might be dealing with the same issues you are. See, a lot of people, they, they put the out of that, that, that good face that, you know, everything is okay. You know, when you talk to people on the street, hey, what's up, man? Everybody's, oh, man, everything's great. And they're going bankrupt. Oh, man, everything's fine. And their kids have not talked to them for three weeks. Oh, man, everything's good. And they're about to go chapter 13. Oh, man, everything is fine. They just repoed their car. See, people are good at the appearance. God looks straight at the heart. You can't play one of those on God. And a lot of people love to hide their thorns. When was the last time you went up to somebody and just opened up and told them the real you? The real things that you're going through. Paul didn't specify what it was. I can tell you something. There's a lot of types of thorns. A thorn can be a habit. Such as drinking, gambling, the use of drugs. It is a thorn to the individual addicted. But you know what? It is more of a thorn to the people that love him or her. Sometimes God lets things happen because if you did not have that thorn in your life, you wouldn't be praying. You would not get close to him. You would not need him. Sometimes drinking, it becomes a thorn for the whole family. Because not just the Whoever the, 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 the drunk is, the wife, it affects the kids, it affects the whole household. You know, I, I have this, I know people that have this mentality. And one day I'm going to win and they got this gambling mentality and they, and they use all their money and, and they spend all their money on this gambling. And a lot of times it hurts the family. They lose everything thinking that one day they're going to get their payoff. And these are thorns that affect Everybody. Drugs, this community, man, it's been so messed up by drugs. And like I said before, not, it's not just the person being affected by the drugs, but the people that love that person. The parents, the brothers, the sisters. God often allows trouble and trials and thorns and people's lives for a bigger purpose, people. See, God could have easily not put Daniel in the, in the lion's den. He could have easily just stopped it. No, no, that's Daniel. He served me. I don't, I don't have to make it go through trouble. But it was for a bigger purpose. He could have least easily stopped Satan from tearing up poor Job. But it was for a bigger purpose. For us to know. So whenever we go through trials, we can go back. Well, you know, nobody had it as bad as Job. There was always a bigger purpose. He could have kept the three, three Hebrew children from going to the fiery furnace, but God didn't. It was change the king. It was for a bigger purpose. Sometimes God gives us thorns. And they hurt. And the Bible says that Paul, imagine this. Man, if there's anybody in the Bible that has contributed more to the word, it has to be Paul. Paul was a man who had a terrible past, and God turned him around, gave him a 180-degree turn, and he turned his life around, and God used him to the end. But you know what he says? I was given a thorn. Wait a minute, God. This guy's changed his life. 
This guy's been going and preaching, getting beat down, taken to jail. You know, he's been in, 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 in shipwrecks. He's been, you know, spit on. He's been tore up. He's been kicked around. He's been surrounded by feces in jail. This guy that serves you on top of that, you're going to give him a thorn? It says that Paul prayed. And you know, Paul, it had to have been a good prayer. If anybody knew how to pray, it was Paul. You know, I get um, emails a lot when people say, Pastor, man, pray for me, man. You know, uh, God's not listening to me right now. I'm, I'm backslidden, man. I need you to pray for me. I'm like, dude, yes, but you need to pray for you too. Oh, you know, I just, I just don't know if, if I'm praying the right way. I said, man, what are you talking about, brother? God, God will listen to you. I said, get on your knees, man. You know, show them your heart. God is ready to listen to your prayers. And this goes against everything that we, that, that we teach at church a lot of times, right? We're, we're trying to tell people, man, pray, God will do a miracle. Pray, God will answer. And people come to me, hey, you, Pastor G, God didn't answer me, man. I, you, can you pray for me? Can you ask him what's up? And a lot of times, God did answer. He always answers but sometimes his answer is no. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is enough. Man, I've been praying. And Paul was praying once, twice, three times. And he got the same answer. You ever prayed hard? You ever been on your knees because your life at that moment was just on the brink of, you were on the brink of doing something terrible, and you got on your knees and you said, God, please take this away, take this pain away. And you had the elders come over and put their hands on you, and things did not change. That thorn was still on your side, inflicting pain. You ever gone to a, well, of course, everybody here, but, you know, on maybe children that don't drive yet. You know, when you go up to, a, to the, the street light, and sometimes it's green, right? Green means... Go. Do it. Go past it. See, sometimes God green lights your prayers. He says, okay. You know what? I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with that. I agree with that. This will be good for you now. Come on. And you're like, yes. You don't know what God just did, man. He came through for me again. I paid the rent. Sometimes you get to a traffic light, and it's yellow, you know? And yellow means slow down. Not around here, though. For some reason, you guys think yellow means go faster. Yellow means hold up, slow down. Not yet. See, sometimes God... Yellow lights your prayers. And he just says, I will when the time is right. I will do this for you when you're ready. I will do this for you when it serves my purpose. I will. And he, he puts you like a, on standby. And then sometimes you get this traffic light and it's red. And what does that mean? Stop. Sometimes God red lights your prayers and says, stop praying. No. But he always answers. 
It's just that we, we, we are looking forward to the yes. We don't like to hear the no's too much. Oh, we don't like to hear, oh, well, not yet. You're not quite ready yet, my brother. Yeah, I know you just became a Christian five days ago, but you're not ready to preach it. We're going to hold up a second. I can't give you that much wisdom and knowledge, man. You got to go through a lot more. As a matter of fact, here, oh, a thorn. And you're thinking, wait a minute, if God is a good God, why does he put us through stuff like that? Why do I have to live with a thorn? That's just the way that God works. And a lot of times we don't, we, we don't want to be honest with ourselves and know that we're surrounded by thorns. Because people can be thorns too. Ladies, you ever like looked in your Facebook and scrolled down and you ran into your ex-boyfriend from 10 years ago? And back then you were like, oh, please, he's the one. Please make it work, Lord. I love you. Please. And that didn't happen. And now you look at it right now and he's a mess. You're like, thank you, Jesus. He saved you from him. He knew there was better for you. But you wanted it at that moment. You needed it at that moment. You wanted that guy. You were so sure he was the one. But God knew better. Just like God knows when to red light you. Because when you're in a traffic light, there's other traffic, opposing traffic that you don't see that can come in and kill you. That's the God that we serve. He knows every time that you can get hurt. And he'll stop it from happening. Maybe we don't like those no's too much. But Lord Jesus, after you become a Christian for a while, and after you, you, you grow in, in his spirit, and, and, and you grow in his word, you're going to see a lot of those no's where you're like, Jesus, thank you so much. I did not know. I did not get it. But I appreciate you that you love me enough to stop me from making a mistake. Numbers chapter 33, 55. Numbers chapter 33, verse 55 says, But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will give you trouble in the land where you will live. Fellas, I know you got homies. And I know you love them. But if those homies are making you backslide to the old you, he's not your real homie. You got to let him go. You got to cut him loose. Because the people that sometimes we like and we love can be the ones in our side. They can stop us from our true purpose of going forward and doing the things of God. They'll keep us stagnant because misery loves company. Joshua 23, 13. Then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you. Whips on your backs and thorns in your eyes until you perish from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. What's the crowd that you're hanging with? What's that crowd? What's that crowd that you approve on on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram where you put all your likes? Where you, you have become this, this you know, uh, you have become like this clique of people that think the same. Just because people think the same as you don't mean that they're right because a lot of times you're wrong. And God says, get out of this clique. Get out of this group. 
It's stopping you from fulfilling my purpose. Thorns, they hurt. Man. There's something in my household, man. They think they're slick at my house. You all know how much I love my Lily. You all know how much, you know, how I love being a grandpa. Well, it just happens that everybody likes to be Lily's best friend. And, you know, we, we, we fight about this, me and my wife. Who do you love more, baby? Kiki or Papi? And, of course, she says Papi. But a lot of times when it comes to doing things that are going to affect the relationship between Lily and us, they say, Papi, you handle it. What you mean? She needs to get a shot. Oh, man. She's going to hate me. See, a lot of times she, she, in her little brain already, she knows that when Papi gets stressed up, and when Poppy puts her in the car alone, something's up. And as I put her in a little seat, and Bianca's in the back, because she won't go outside. Well, actually, she does, because she starts crying too loud. She already knows the doctor is right around the corner from my house. And usually when I take off from in my car, I go through another way. I decide to make a left and go through the back. She's already doing this. She already knows. As soon as I stop that car and she sees the clinic, the doctor's office, she lets out a scream. By the time I'm in the lobby, it's like, ah, like super. She's got this super duper duper high pitch. And I'm like, baby, it's okay, it's okay. And there's, you know, Bianca tried to write him in, trying to make this happen fast. You guys, hurry. You know, we, 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 we don't want her to suffer too much, you know. So we're trying to make this quick. And then they put us in the back and they make us wait in a room for another 15 minutes. And she's just screaming. Then comes the nurse. Oh, my God. Comes the nurse. And when she's got to check her temperature, man, she, she already is acting like she got poked. So they take her temperature. They take off a little. They, they, they weigh her. She hates it. She can't stand it. And we're waiting for the doctor. The doctor comes in. Oh, my Lord. And I'm just holding her because she just does not want to see him. And she's putting, she's trying to, if she was back with Bianca, if Bianca was old, she would try to go back in the womb. And she's trying to hide in here. And I'm like, I said, baby, it's going to be okay, sweetheart. It's not that bad. And I know it's going to be bad because, man, you ever had a shot on your leg? Bing, right here. You ever had those? You don't remember those, do you? Oh, man. They're not pleasant. And there's my baby. As much as I love her, I know I have to take her there. And she's going to get punctured. And it's going to bring pain in her. But you know what? We have to realize that which goes in her is, gonna, is good for her health and for her future. And it's the same thing with God. Sometimes we get punctured, but, but he's trying to fill us, not with just a medical thing, but more of the Holy Spirit of God in us. We need those thorns. Because the blessing does not come from the, uh, you know, the, 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 the spiritual knowledge that God given us. It comes from the thorn. If I didn't go through that pain... I wouldn't get better. That vaccine stops anything from spreading in my little baby's life. That vaccine stops at that moment from her to get any type of disease. That thorn on your side is the same for you. And you probably saying but it's been too long but God I've, I know I've lived with this thorn all my life why don't you just take it out but God knows you better because he's probably like if I take it out man you'll leave me you won't need me he 
you just go your own way and forget about me. The storm I put on you. And so you, we maintain the relationship. So you will still cry out to me. So we will be one-on-one -on -one. every morning when you wake up in the morning. You'll be praying for that same thing. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. And we finish with this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. It says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time. But what? Painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. It says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time. It hurts. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. What are the thorns in your life today? You got a thorny relationship? You get opposition? You got people that hate on you? And you're praying to God to take them out? I can tell you something, man. God has shown me patience. And a lot of times those people who criticize and tear you down, God weeds them out of my life. A lot of times when I pray, God, please, you know, Lord, keep my enemies away. And oddly enough, I start losing friends. Because they were always enemies for me. My homies. Those dudes we hung out with. Those dudes that when we had a drink, we knew, hey, man, you know, when you got drunk, man, you, I'm going to be with you for the end, bro. Yeah, you too, man. I love you. And then you go broke. And you call them out for some help. And they leave you on red. God, man, but you're my boy. Not right now, I'm not. Don't talk to me about money, bro. You know, that's, that's different, bro. I'm your homie too. You know, I told you I'd be, but when it comes to money, man, I'm not that dude. So which ones are your thorns? What is it that you carry? Is it a reoccurring weakness? Is it a health issue? A, tr a problem that never seems to get better? Is it something that's a constant source of frustration or heartache? Or perhaps maybe you know somebody that's, that lives with a thorn. That is always limping spiritually. Where's your compassion for them? Hey, man, God, I got to take care of my thorn before I take care of them. No, you got it wrong. See, because if you took care of their thorn, you will get the same love back. God loves you people. Let's stop criticizing others. We never know what they have in their lives, man. We never know what they're going through. We never know their issues. See, a lot of people here, we're, we're very open. And, I, you know, I see you guys, you know, on Facebook, you write, pray for me. But you never tell me what you want me to pray for. You always put, pray for me. God knows the problem. Yeah, God knows your thorn. What is it? Is it people? Health? Relationships? Anxiety? What is it? What did you bring here today? Can you live with that, though? Can you live with God saying, my grace is sufficient? 
Are you cool with that? But see, I'm here to tell you today, man. I'm sorry, but you need to live with it. You need to live with that which God knows is for your good. And maybe through it, you'll bypass that. And he'll achieve his purpose. But maybe after that, man, there might be another one. Ouch! Lord, I just got done with this one. You got another. Oh, yeah, man, I'm taking you from glory to glory, G. Don't worry. No pain, no gain. Is that right, Sam? See, Sam works out hard at the gym. But it applies in the spiritual, too. No pain. No gain. It says he sent a messenger from Satan to buffet me. A messenger from Satan? God let that happen? God lets a lot happen, people. He sent a messenger from Satan to buffet me. You know what buffet me means? To over and over strike me. Because that thorn doesn't just hurt one day. It's every day you wake up with it. Every day your heart goes like, Lord, I don't know how much more I can take this. I love you, G. I had to teach you something. I know you love your son. I know you had to go through some stuff. I know you love your daughters. I know you love your wife. But see, if I didn't put this thorn on you, G, you wouldn't be preaching. You would still be out there trying to reach for the world of whatever it could give you. You've tasted of the goodness of the world and it felt good. But I'm trying to use you. I'm trying to let you taste that which will fill you for eternity. I'm trying to give you that living water that the world never gave you. I'm trying to give you the answers that these smart diploma hanging people and scientists and this and that think they have it figured out. I'm going to give you those revelations. I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to bless your life. And I'm going to give you this big house on Bath Avenue because I love you. And I'm going to bring your family together. And I'm going to use your wife for my purpose and my kingdom. But in order for me to do that, here you go. I get it. I know what my thorn is. I felt the pain. But you know what? As I figure out that his grace is sufficient, the pain becomes less and less. Up to the point where I'm not really thinking about the pain. I'm more aware of his grace. His grace is sufficient. His grace it's everything. I wish I, the Paul would have said, you know, that's sufficient. That's just like, it's, it's just enough. It's barely enough. I mean, is it a better word? His grace is, is more than, his grace is more than enough. His, his grace is amazing. You know, his grace, well, you know, has no boundaries. His grace is, 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 I mean, whatever word you want to put with it, he just said, it's enough for you. Whatever situation you have, his grace is sufficient. Because when you are weak, is when he is strong. So I talk about my weaknesses. Yeah, you see me over here talking all about my weaknesses and how I was and how my ego used to have the best of me and how I could easily go back into that. 
I talk about my weaknesses, about my adulterous past, about the person that I used to be. Because that dude was weak. With Christ, I'm strong. So with all eyes closed and head bowed, Father, I know you brought here some people, my Lord. Some of these don't just carry a thorn, Father. You've, some of these carry a crown of thorns, my Lord. I know, Father, that you love them, my King. And a lot of times, they don't really get it yet, Father. Because they think they're being punished for their past, but that's not who you are. That's not the God. You're, you're a God of grace, my Lord. And these people need to know that, Father, if anybody here don't quite get it, if anybody here is still carrying that pain that doesn't understand why, and God's grace is not sufficient, man, come up here right now. I want to pray for you. God says, man, I need you to live with it. I know what's best for you. The outcome, the outcome is we get to spend eternity with our Lord and Savior in heaven with all those that are there already waiting for us. Is that freaking amazing? That's how good God is. We have that hope. We have that instilled in us. Our faith carries us through pain. Be secure in every word that comes from this book. Be secure that he wants only the best for you. Pain is part of the journey. And the God of all grace who called us into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, he will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. That's the God we serve. God full of grace. As we sing this song, man, look into your heart. Do you need Christ right now? And if you do, head up here. I want to pray for you. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop 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 working. He hasn't stopped working on you since the moment you went through those doors. And I know there's people here, and I can feel in my spirit. Now you're holding back from coming up here right now, man. Don't, don't, don't let it go by. Don't write me later, Pastor, pray for me. You want prayer? Come here right now. 
you, you, you know, this, these thorns have got you down. Come up here right now. We want to pray for you. Come on, people. Let the Spirit of God keep working in your hearts. Listen. Let Him lead. If the Spirit of God has got your heart pumping right now, that has nothing to do with me. You got to listen to God. So as we sing once more, you need prayer? Get up here. Bring your family. Come on. He's the way maker. He's making a way right now. I'm going to take some time and call you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. You light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it again. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker. Run. I feel a need right now. Pastor, see all these people here? You have a gift that I don't have. I need you to pray for them. I need you to pray for healing. Your gift. Join me as we pray right now. Father God, I come to you right now, Lord, and I'm just praying for healing. For the people that's come forward that needs healing, God. Right now, I rebuke the name of Satan right now in the name of Jesus Christ. He gets rid of the doubt. It's gone. Right now, I stand upon your word that we can claim victory, that it's already done right now, God. Right now, Jesus, I pray that you just touch these people supernaturally with doctors, hospitals, however you want to do it. But we know it comes from you. And right now, God, I claim it in your name, Jesus Christ. Right now, I claim it. We're claiming victory that it's already done. We may not see it right now like the song says, but we know it's already done right now. We know that it's already happened. And we're going to stand on that belief. And we're going to praise God's name. And we're going to tell people about it. God, right now, let them, let them feel your touch. Let them feel your peace right now. God, and their families too also, God. We know that they're worried, just like Pastor G was talking. They feel the thorn too. So right now, God, I pray that you touch the family. Give them peace right now. Let them know that you've got this. Let them know that you've handled this. Oh, God, we thank you so much. Oh, God.